can imagine when you're stressed from work and you're trying to eat your lunch, your body is not going to digest. So digestive function, and this is really key for nutrient absorption, which fuels our whole body's functions and cells. So in that pure aspect, then we actually can't digest our food and, and break down our food and absorb our food correctly. And we are in this chronic state of stress a lot of times, a lot of times. I would say modern scenario, we generally never go back down into parasympathetic unless we're watching a movie, we're meditating or we're asleep. <laughs> so that has huge impacts long term on our digestive health, on our, on, our, on our vitamins, on our minerals, on our cellular function, and then other areas of reproduction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it just goes on and on and on and the, the damage accordingly. So where we need to sort of in, infiltrate is making sure that we're having time for the body to come back into a parasympathetic nervous system state. Welcome to The Balance Theory, a podcast aimed at arming you with tools and tips so that you are well equipped to not only identify and define, but own your own definition of balance. I'm your host, Erica, and thank you for joining me today. Hey, balancers, and welcome back to episode 62 of The Balance Theory podcast. I just want to start off by thanking you for choosing to spend your time with me, whether that is your walk, your drive, you're cleaning your house, whatever you're doing. It's really nice to know you show up every single week to listen and learn. And thank you to everybody who reached out to give me some feedback to let me know that they really, really enjoyed the female health specific episodes. So I will definitely try and have more guests on more regularly who focus on that area. And as always, if there is a topic that you really enjoy, that there's something or a guest I've had on that's really struck a chord with you or potentially even a topic, please do let me know as I would love to integrate this into my planning and I guess the people I'm reaching out to. So don't be shy. Before I introduce the guest that we've got on today, I did want to share something very, very exciting. And that is next week, I will be launching my very own ebook. So this will be an absolute free download. It's going to go perfectly with the episode, the Monday Muse of next week. So basically the Monday Muse will take you through the first half of the ebook. And the second half is all bonus content that you can do just to expand on the the topic a little bit more. So for those of you who are OG listeners, or for those of you who have been with us for a little bit longer than one year now, you'll know we did a really cool episode. The last Monday Muse of last year was sort of like a how to wrap up your year, how to end the year on a bang. And this year I wanted to do something similar, but really take it to the next level. So what I've done is next week's episode is going to be all about how to end the year on a high, how to really reflect and positively take the learnings and hurdles that you may have faced this year package that all up so that you are well equipped, I guess, to tie a nice bow on the year gone by, end it on a high and build momentum for 2022. So I guess the sticking point for me was why do we always wait until January 1st to think about our goals, to unwind and really consider and reflect on what we want for the next year? But I just took a moment and I thought, if we're a little bit proactive, if we do this through the month of December, if we start the reflection, if we start clearing our mind, if we start ticking off all those things that just weigh us down mentally and really just clear our emotional space, then by the time January 1 comes around, we're going to be absolutely ready to launch straight into it. So that's what next week is all about. If if you're ready sounding like that's something you need in your life, get ready for it. As I said, there'll be a free ebook that will have not only all the content we'll be talking about in the Monday Muse, all the activities that we do together. As you guys know, I love to do that with you all. So you'll have a pen and paper version to follow, or you can um, edit it online. It'll be an editable PDF, but there will also be an extension part, which will be all about building that momentum for 2022. So that's something I've been working on that I'm really excited about and is sort of a precursor for some things to come in 2022. I can't tell you much about it yet, but don't worry, I'll be dropping little nuggets as we go. So get excited for that. But now, on, more importantly, on to today's guest. So November has been one of those months. It doesn't happen often throughout the year where I actually have four guests on instead of three. It's when the last day of November just slides over into an extra Monday. So that means you guys get an extra guest episode, which is exciting for you and exciting for me because I get to chat to more and more people. So today I have on the lovely Jody Duval, who is the founder and the principal naturopath of Revital Health over in WA. It's a Perth-based clinic 
which aims to provide clients with a point of difference healthcare plan so that they know what it really feels like to be truly healthy. What I love about Jodi is she's not just a naturopath, she's also an international speaker, lecturer, CEO of Home Hope Australia and a medical course creator who is passionate about spreading quality information and informing people about optimizing your health. And that is exactly what Jodi gave us today on the podcast. I'm so, so grateful for her downloading all of her knowledge in the short window of time we had. I definitely will be getting her back on in 2022 because there was so much uncovered ground that I would love to dive in further with her. But for today's episode, the things we were able to chat about were how to optimize your health from biohacking to just what the base foundational work should be to non-negotiable habits that every single person should be doing. She shares a little bit about her backstory, so how her love of chocolate actually led her to her passion area. She talks about what epigenetics are, which is something I'm personally very, very fascinated about the importance of minerals and why you might not actually be getting enough, especially through your tap water. So if you're someone who's always like, oh, I drink tap water, but I'm not sure what's wrong with it. That's, you know, my hands are up in the air. That's totally me. This is a really very informative session about the quality of your water, which I've actually now taken on board and had a look at how I can purify and I guess incorporate some minerals into my water. And I guess wrapped up in this discussion is the importance of hydration. We also dive into stress and the impacts it has on your body right now. So if you're one of those people sitting there that's thinking, yeah, I'm I'm stressed out, but it's fine because, you know, I'll just work hard now while I'm young and then it'll be fine. She actually shares with us how stress is impacting your body right now, which I think is really, really important to reframe our disconnection from stress. We often think that we're young and it doesn't impact us now, but when you get your head around the fact that stress is so multi-layered that it impacts every function of the body so that, you know, if you're stressed now, you're not actually digesting properly, which means that those nutrients and benefits of your food are not actually going to optimize all the other systems. It becomes quite scary when you think about the immediate knock-on effect. So I think it's a really important thing to discuss. And on the topic of stress, she gives us some tips on how to stay in parasympathetic, which is your opposite of stress, I guess, mode. She also shares some cool alternate plants and supplements that you might be keen to research further if it's something that sounds like you. If you do want to connect with Jodi more, you can find her on her Instagram, her website, or her podcast. She does have her own podcast, which I've linked in the show notes below. Feel free to share this with a friend or family member who may also love it, needs to know a little bit about hydration or just overall optimal health. I know you're going to get so much out of today's episode. If you do have a quick minute or two to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, it would mean the absolute world. Even just share what your favorite episode has been so far or let me know directly through Instagram. You can find us at The Balance Theory. Get excited for next week for our ebook and our last Monday Muse of the Year. But for now, let's dive in. Joining me all the way from the West Coast, I have the beautiful Jodie Duval on the show today. Welcome to The Balance Theory Podcast. It's so nice to have you on. Oh, thanks, Erica. Lovely to, to lovely to meet you and also to be on. Likewise. I had to think there for a sec. East Coast, West Coast, where are we going? I'm doing my never eat. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> mum's all the way over in uh, Perth as well. So a beautiful part of the world I hear. I haven't yet ventured over, but definitely one on the bucket list now that borders and whatnot are opening up. But um, I'd love for you to share a little bit with our audience about who you are, what you do, and the incredible practice you've got running as well. Oh, that's a big one. All right. <laughs> so um, I, I am a naturopath um, and I have a, a clinic here in Perth and um, have been practicing in that way for about or over 10 years now. So 11, 12 years. I also lecture at Endeavour College and I've been doing that for about five to six years and I absolutely love that. Um, now I, I also uh, travel a little bit and have a variety of different businesses that I've um, dabbled in over the years and I've also started a home hope which is health optimization medicine and practice here in Australia so I'm a CEO here for that um, and I can dive in a little bit if you want me um, to later on about that but that's a global organization focused on education towards prevention of health so or prevention and health so building health versus um, h- helping t- to treat disease so we're sort of working in a different way there um, I also have two kiddos, so that's something that keeps me really busy as well. So family life. Full-time is- job on top of a full-time yeah. job. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And I have a podcast. So I do enjoy that and sharing the knowledge that I gain through my guests and just meeting really incredible people, as you would see, is that it's really humbling to meet and connect with people across the world, across Australia, um, and just learning different stories that just keeps me going. I'm a real people person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And as we were saying, um, as I was telling you just before we jumped on the episode, I have binge listened to your episodes this week. So I'll definitely pop a link to the show below. So if people love our chat today, they can check it out further. Um, but take, take me back a little bit. So you practice as a naturopath. Do you specialize in um, any particular area? Because I find all the naturopaths I've either spoken to or just met in my own personal life, they kind of have like a a particular interest they just somehow seem to lean towards and always have clients in that space so do you sort of have a a practice area you specialize in yeah I guess as a naturopath gut health is always going to be major and I think that's sort of pivotal to a lot of people's practices anyway so I sort of can't really say that's a specialty of mine but my my passion and focus really is in cellular health so I do that the metabolite testing um, we do organic acid testing a lot in my practice and functional type testing functional medicine Um, but a a lot of focus of my practice is really that base foundational health and I find that that's really something that can be built in multiple ways for people and going in that way but also um, I do really like the biohacking type space and that's something that um, has been more of a recent interest of mine in maybe the, the last four years however when I first heard of the biohacking term which really means that you're using certain technologies or um, nutritionals or therapies to mold your biology in a, in a, in a better way. So optimizing it much quicker. So when I first heard about this, I was like, well, I've I've been doing this for about 15 years anyway, and dabbling in in detoxification and in infrared saunas and, you know, all sorts of different therapies that I was using to, to change my biology in a very positive way. So I I would say that I really love and enjoy that and I love pushing the edge of health. So I really like to find the the newest and greatest and, um, you know, maybe sometimes taboo things that I I like (laughs) to sort of explore myself and then possibly bring towards um, my clients as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll definitely get into, I guess, the more nerdy slash Um, general health, like optimizing health content in just a moment. But on that note of biohacking, because it's something I find super interesting as well, I'd love to know what's been your most effective biohack and one you've recently found that has been like super left that you just like didn't even expect to be like a hack. Okay. Hmm. So most effective would be consistency of things like infrared sauna and red light therapy. I find that they're like, In terms of the biohacking space, that would be um, one of the most efficient. Now, my my most favourite nutropic biohack is methylene blue. And I so can't really, well, we can't really speak about it too much in Australia. So we're not really legally allowed to actually buy this here. Um, But we get a hold of it somehow. And that for me is a very powerful (laughs) substance um, along with uh, other things. So Transcriptions is a sort of a side company to the company that I'm involved in, in, um, as as in Home Hope. And they have a a beautiful range of trochees that they have. And I really, really enjoy that. So when people see me maybe posting with a blue tongue, that's what that is. That's methylene blue. So I do really, really like that. that. And what's that sort of a hack for? What does that do? So without mentioning mentioning the C word, (laughs) as as we call it, (laughs) the the, the COVID, um, as we talk about. So it can be effective in immune health. And it can also, um, it's more focused towards mitochondrial health. So it really does optimise mitochondria, which, as we know, uh, is in every, well, in every single cell in the body, yeah. but also more rich in areas of the heart, the brain. So that's why it is such a potent mitochondrial, uh, sorry, a nootropic. So really good for brain focus, brain health. And where it, where it optimises also with sunlight and it can get really brought on the effects can be brought on by sunlight and um you know creating more energy for the body so it's pretty it's pretty amazing what it can do interesting and so would that be your really left biohack or was there another one you wanted to share 
Well, there, there is dabbling of um, peptides and peptides coming more popular over in the US. And that's something that will, will start to slowly trickle into Australia a little bit more. There's external peptides already being used, but internal peptides can be something that can be very effective if used the right way. Yeah. And is that, is that for um, like to help promote the recovery? Is that more for recovery type um, space? Yeah, a lot of it's used in gym and um, muscle building sort of activities, uh, but it can be cellular repair as well as DNA repair um, and multiple other uses as well. So it can also be for sleep, for um, for injury and ligament repair, as well as gut health too with the B- BPC. So there's a few, few little things that can be that extra little bit that you can do. Um, but there's a lot in the space, you know, I've been doing even colonics or coffee enemas or, you know, IV nutrient therapy. There, there's so much, there's a lot coming. Yeah. Interesting. I think a few things there for everybody to research as well. And I'm sure you talk about <laughs> it all on your podcast too. So definitely worth checking out, but I want to know a little bit more about you. And I mean, Chocolate always leads to a positive uh, situation in my life, but I know for you in particular, the discovery of raw chocolate led you to actually everything you're doing today. So I'd love for you to share that story with our listeners. So um, initially where I had natural medicine as, as a big part of my life when I was younger and I lived on a farm, which Molly Cottle Farm I lived um, and, and we, we sort of saved animals and we used to use the therapies on them. And I saw an interest then from, from that point. So it, it was there already. But then I went to London after starting to study and um, recognised that I was overdoing it in multiple ways. So I was working a few jobs. I was trying to study full time while in London from here um, and also going out and partying as you do at that age. I realised there was something that needed to shift and change. And by chance, I saw a, a flyer for a raw food workshop. And I thought, well, this sounds interesting. What's, what's raw food? I wanted to get involved in that. And when I went to this lady's house who she was conducting the workshop and tasting the food, and then she came out at the end with the, this raw chocolate and she'd made. And so I'd never actually tasted pure cacao before um, and I hadn't actually understood what that was. And so we, we talked through that and it came from the cacao bean and the, the aroma plant. Um, and at that stage, I'd not learned that now I teach botany. So I know all this stuff very well now, but back then I was fascinated by this. So then I, I tasted the chocolate and it, it was literally a life change. And I say this, you know, a lot of people say, this, but it was a life-changing moment for me because the the vitality or or the, the the feelings that I had that it brought on and this is what's sort of contained in the raw cacao when you when you have that different to what a chocolate would be if what it, in a supermarket that's highly processed um, I just felt this this love this bubble this like energy and yeah, a burst of sort of vitality coming out of my body I thought I'll, I want more of this this is incredible so that led me on to making raw chocolate a business over there so a good a best friend of mine and who also had a love for chocolate he he's like let's start a business journey and so we had raw angels was our business business and we tested on all sorts of people across London <laughs> We had all sorts of different types of chocolate. We had orange chocolate and peppermint and, and um, even white we tried to make. And so it became this, this beautiful hobby on the side of what we were doing um, and it really changed a lot of people's lives around us as well. So that was sort of the start of me realising that you can, you can have something that really optimises you and you can utilise that that makes you healthy versus takes away from your health. I love that. And that's such a nice segue into, I guess, the work and and your passion areas and what you're doing now. And you've sort of opened up my next question really nicely, which is if somebody wants to optimize their health, so notwithstanding where they're at on their journey right now, maybe they already have a relatively healthy lifestyle, maybe they don't at all, maybe they're super clean, but if they want to optimize their health, where is somewhere that they can start, that everybody can start? Hmm. Well, and I, I, I say this to a lot of my clients and a lot of my students is that it's, it's really based foundational work and people don't like to hear this because it can be very boring. <laughs> you know, you don't like to be told that you have to start right at the bottom to get that foundation right, but it really is so true from any biohacking space anyway that if you don't have those building bricks, things will fall and whatever you're doing on top of that, it's not going to work if the foundation's not right. So 
those foundational steps would be water, sleep, so good water, and we can talk about that, you know, in a whole segment on its own. Um, yeah, sleep, sunlight, getting good diet and good vitamins through your digestive system and looking after all those foundational points of your body's health. Um, and laughter, joy, connection, that those are really the non-negotiables. They have to be there. And that can take time to build. And so sometimes for me in, cl in clinic here, it's really getting those foundational steps going for people uh, with the aid of other things on top. And then we can get to the fun stuff. Then you can really get to the optimization. But sometimes that's all the body needs. And this is what naturopathic medicine really has pivoted off is nature. So, you know, you're optimizing your natural environment. This mediatrix nature is like one of our foundational points where we're working with the nature and the healing capacity of the body. Yeah. I love that. And it's such a, such a nice holistic framework to have kind of as you at your core. And I like that it touches on so many aspects of your life and it, it kind of serves to, sh for me, when I, when I hear you kind of say that it makes me think in at moments in my life, when I potentially haven't felt like, you know, I'm stable or, or unbalanced to, to kind of use our framework. It, it's sort of generally because one of those foundational blocks are off or missing, had a bad night's sleep, haven't hydrated enough. My diet's a little bit off. So it, it's a nice reminder for everybody to just come back to the basics. Like there's no point, I guess, thinking about getting an infrared sauna and doing all these crazy biohacking, maybe you want a blue tongue type situation if you haven't really got the core things down pat. So I think that's a really, really nice reminder. And um, just to get a little bit nerdy here and let's go a little bit um i guess more into your professional expertise as well can you talk to me about um what epigenetics are and why they're actually important to understand because i've always found this really really fascinating and i think the listeners are going to get a lot out of it too yeah so epigenetics really is looking at genes response to our environment so that's really what it is um, so there is certain genes that we can have that are turned on and off and these um, are dictated by certain factors. So we've got age, we've got diet, we've got environment, and I'll talk about toxins associated with that. Um, and really that's where we're talking about the shifts and changes and we're not really dictated by our genes. So I think that's something to understand in that a lot of people think we're given a certain gene set and we're, we're given certain DNA and that's it. That that's, sets us up for certain disease states for the rest of our life. So that's not true. Um, we can actually change those and we can have genes that are turned on and off. So we have a susceptibility there. So we have something that can become something, but it's determined on what we're doing, what we, our lifestyle is like, what our diet and what our environment's like. Um, and that will then change the outcome of those certain disease states that we're you know, meant for. So that's really sort of like that, that foundation of what that is. Now, those impacts can be huge across Across the board in terms of generations as well so when you have grandma who's um, got has your you know your mum in utero and then mum's eggs in there would become you so anything that grandma has done or smoking or you know coming up against certain chemicals then that can have an impact on dna and gene you know aspects within you so there is these generations that we can look at and we can also see these, these aspects across research and certain um, life events or um, world events, famine, war, and they're how they're impacting future generations because of this epigenetic change of environment. So we, we are seeing a huge increase of plastics in our environment and that is very troublesome for epigenetics plus all the other chemical soup that I call um, in the environment. So this is why certain therapies like the biohacks that we talk about, I like to see as being an emptying of the cup of toxins for us. So we have mm -hmm. to sort of have aspects in our life and, and lifestyle and diet to empty those cup, that cup of toxins and that fares better for our epigenetics for our response of our body's ability to, to cope daily and to make sure that we're not turning on, on or off the genes that we want to be strong. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a good point to, to make and understand because, you know, you could, like myself, I consider myself to be pretty healthy, but I don't have my own fruit and veggies growing you know, and I um, don't currently have a filtered tap where I'm living. And so all these things 
when you start thinking about it on a more granular level and the quality of, of these, of this water and of the fruit and vegetables and stuff like on a deeper level can be impacting your epigenetics in a different way. So then I guess the counter to that is what do you have in your toolkit to uh, balance it out? Shall we say, what do you see as the most common um, epigenetic that gets impacted by an environment? Is there something that's super common that people can, I guess, be weary of or just aware of? Um, as in like chemicals, you mean, or, you know, certain aspects towards certain genes? Yes, certain aspects that are, that are generally more common or, or maybe more impacted in the world we live in today. Yeah. And I, I would say that the onslaught of things like, um, you know, the chemicals, the pesticides, the sprays that are on our fruits and veggies, I think they're going to be, they're, they're huge and going to be huge. Um, and in the impacts of those, water and plastics, again, is really huge, associating with hormones and, and aspects that are, you know, along those lines as well. Um, but I think lifestyle factors like smoking and even cardiovascular, you know, the metabolic diseases um, and processed foods, just in, the, the, I think it's the capacity or the, the, the increase of what we've seen and what people are consuming in higher quantities you know, we've got corn syrup and we've got the sugars and you've got the vegetable oils. All these have impacts on inflammation, therefore changing, you know, DNA and, and epigenetic changes within the body. So I think it's not really a, a matter of one or a few. I think it's that increase of, of multiple things across the environment and um, you can't really pull apart one or the other. It's just that yeah. combination. And that's what we don't know is what's happening with the combination of those individual rate, you know, chemicals are researched, but the combination of those, even in beauty products and personal products and deodorants and heavy metals, they all have huge impacts and then combining. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Watch, watch his out. space. <laughs> Um, I, I think the important thing is to know what to do with this information because it's no point hearing this and then not knowing what to do about it. And that's where the, the detoxification support that we can use or just increase in the nutrient capacity within the body and, and enabling us to take away some of those toxins, then we can feel empowered again because it can be quite hopeless once you start looking into a lot of the things that we come up against. And I don't mean that for anyone. There's always an empowerment point where you can then go and do something about it. Yeah, absolutely. And I might just jump ahead to another question I had, which is, are there any non-negotiable things that people should be doing? Um, and, and this let's, um, frame this more in terms of like accessible things. So potentially not everybody has access to an infrared sauna regularly, um, but are there say supplements or daily habits and routines that people can be doing to help with this sort of uh, uncertain combination of factors coming into play? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, so like I said before, some basics would be good water. I think water is really important. We are made up a lot of water in our body. So if we don't have a good source of water coming in, then we can be adding to that toxic load. So filtered water in the right form. Uh, and, you know, for me, I use Aquature at home, which is a, a, a water filtration system that I really love, but there are multiples on the market, but you just have to look out for some of those. And I've gone through years and years and years of research to try and find the best ones. Um, so water is really key and, and I see it again in clinic. Someone will come in and they'll say, I've got brain fog, I'm not feeling well. How much water are you drinking? Well, I'm drinking one glass a day. We increase water and it's a miracle cure. <laughs> so it really can be as simple as that. You're, you're aiding the toxins out of the body with some extra water. So other factors associated with that non-negotiables would be having good stool movements. And I'm talking poo now, I know, I'm sorry, but um, it <laughs> really is the way that you have to keep. <laughs> I'm not shy in that manner. I've got a son as well. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, the good clearance mechanisms for all emunctories, as I call them. So your, your, your skin, you're sweating, you're breathing, you've got your, your stools and your urine. They're all ways that we remove toxins. So keeping all those really healthy, um, that, that's good ways of doing that. And that's the fibre, you know, so that's the lifestyle again. Yeah, absolutely. And how about, I'm always curious to hear, um, especially like 
naturopaths or people in your space, are there any supplements, say not food, uh, it's not from food directly, but just supplements in general that you would recommend to a lot of people like in general, or do you think it's more a tailored approach and there's not really one size fits all for that kind of question? Yeah, it, I think there is definitely individual components and, and you know, I think to get the best out of treatment, you're, you're definitely better getting an individual look at your body in, in any way, whether it's just a consultation or some testing. But there are definitely things that people can add in and use, especially around this time. I really do like NAC, so anastylcysteine. It's a very popular supplement out there at the moment. Now, the reason why I love this is it's a multiple action. Um, it, it is a precursor to glutathione. And glutathione is one of our major antioxidants in our body that's used. And so when we have an onslaught of chemicals and causing DNA changes where we're looking at epigenetics and we need a lot of um, oxidative or antioxidant support to then counteract some of those damaging effects. So having that is really powerful. And I find that's a, a sort of a, a good daily use as well as looking at that from a perspective of actually helping the lungs. So it can actually break apart mucus and increase lung function in some people. So that also does really help in that space. However, with anything, I really feel like, so people do know, like you cannot have NAC on an empty stomach if you have sensitive gastric tissue. So, you know, stomach who might be a little bit more ulcerative, then you, you need to actually make sure that you're not having that on an empty stomach or even not having it at all. So there's always components that we need to be looking for. And yeah. this is why, you know, we do studies, we learn about these things and also the type of supplement and what form and quality it is. So that's really also very important. But um, another one I would love to mention is minerals. So they, uh, you know, adding in multiple minerals because of the fact that we don't have, especially in Australia, we don't have the best soils. I know WA is one of the worst as well as the water, which is unfortunate. Um, so we need to re-put back in those minerals and a Celtic sea, a sea salt supplement would also be something you could use, but a multi-mineral supplement in powdered form or tablet form would be something that people could also have. Now, I love and talking about this because it's the way the, the cells communicate. So with minerals, that's how cells talk. That's also how they clear out and how they bring in nutrients. So for not having your minerals in a, in a good quantity or the right quantity, then you're missing out on those good communication skills of your cells. And that's DNA replication. They need to talk to know what to do. Yeah. Absolutely. That's actually a good one to mention. Um, I, have, I don't think I've had anyone mention minerals on the podcast before, and it is really important. Like you said, like the quality of the soil is obviously not up to scratch here. And is that the only place we get our minerals from, or do they come from fruit and veg as well? Notwithstanding, obviously, that the fruit and veg come from the soil, but, but directly speaking, mm. is that our only source of minerals? And water. So a lot of people would look at water as being the source of minerals and where we would normally have gotten our minerals from as well. But yeah, fruit and mm -hmm. veggies and um, yeah, and the water. But if you're filtering water, then you're not generally getting the minerals depending on what filtration system you're using. So reverse osmosis generally takes out a lot of those minerals as well. Um, so putting those back in is very important. And, you know, when I, I actually um, podcasted with Simland recently and he wrote a book with James, um, who is, which is the mineral fix. And it's a beautiful book talking about all these aspects. Um, and James also wrote the, the salt fix. So, um, <laughs> talking about the misconceptions of salt and having sodium as the pure you know thing we talk about in terms of having salt but salt actually means multi-minerals you know a branching of around 78 minerals that we're needing in our body including iodine which is thyroid function so all these minerals get forgotten i think and that's again i find as that foundational base health really we need to be looking towards those as, as making sure that we've got all that aspect in there because without all of that and the body can't function properly. Yeah, absolutely. And so just before we move on from this, what is it about our tap water at the moment, the way, well, the way it is in Australia, you know, cause you, you think you go to Europe, you can't drink the tap water, you come here, it's fine. What is it about the tap water? That's not actually that good for you because the more I'm kind of going along, the more I'm hearing it, but I grew up drinking tap water. So for me, it's kind of like, you know, I'm not actually sure what's, what's bad about it. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, this is a tricky one, and some some people may get upset with some of this information. <laughs> but hey ho, go. I think research everything yourself. with a grain of salt. Everything with a grain of salt. Take your mineral. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I think, you know, further research and critical thinking is something that's very important for people to take on and, and um, fact checking or checking information, whether it's something they've heard right or wrong. So, um, you know, certain chemicals that are found and heavy metals and offflow from certain multiple things. So we've got pharmaceutical offflow from the groundwater. We've got, um, you know, added in chemicals like the fluoride and the chlorine. And chlorine, when it's heated up and, and in, in um, the body, can have multiple different effects. So that can be, um, you know, a lot of issues with people, not just externally but internally. So there, there can be um, chemical reactions associated with that for the body. Now, fluoride, people and dentists and, and the industry love, and this does um, upset a few people when we do comment on fluoride. Um, however, there, there is certain circumstances where people um, are really reacting to fluoride and there is some issues with certain areas of the brain and, and you know, so I'm not going to dive too much into that, but that's definitely something I've found in my research to be an issue for health. Um, then, you know, other aspects. So bacteria, um, you know, heavy metals, all those things that are found in the tap water. And I remember doing a talk, uh, it, was, it would have been about six years ago for a corporate organisation and one of the water court people were sitting in front of me in the audience and I was commenting on water and I was saying that we should be filtering and she came up to me afterwards and said, oh my gosh, she, 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 she said, have you seen the reports of what's actually in our water? In our water? I'm like, well, yeah, I, I have. I've looked through it. She's like... I would never drink the tap water and I've and I see it all the time <laughs> I'm like yeah I know she's like I'm totally in agreement with you and thank you for spreading the word and but she's like but I can't say anything <laughs> so for me that was sort of enough to go right I'm on the right path as well um, on on filtering water and many and many of people are, are on the same board so I, I wouldn't come across many people now that agree that tap water is fantastic for us <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, something for everyone, I guess, to do their own research on it and look into further. But just so I understand, so when you filter the water, then your suggestion is to replenish that with, say, the minerals or the salts, because essentially you're stripping it bare, correct? Exactly. Yeah, especially with the reverse osmosis. Some other filtration systems use um, charcoal and beads and all sorts of other things. So there still is some mineral content left in there. Um, but again, depending on whether water or where you live is coming from, you know, is it a salination unit or, you know, or desalination, should I say, those sorts of things obviously wouldn't have that many minerals left in them either. Yep. Well, great to know. Got some, <laughs> got some homework to do as well. <laughs> I might, um, I might ask you now a little bit about, um, so let's talk a little bit about stress and anxiety, obviously two things, a lot of people, or most people I would say have experienced at some point in their life, if not at this very moment. And I think a lot of people understand long-term what the like prolonged impacts of stress and anxiety can do. You know, they think of oh, that's down the track. You don't really think about it, especially like as a young person experiencing stress, but I think it's important to understand what's, what it's actually doing. What are the real impacts on our bodies right now in terms of inflammation, in terms of internal communications? I'd love for you to, I guess, share your understanding of how it plays out in our body in, in, the, in real time. So I think in response to that, it's good to start where we're looking at the fight, fright, flight and freeze. Now, that gives us an idea of what happens to us in certain circumstances of stress. So understanding the fact that there is an acute stress that we can have or a chronic stress, chronic long term stress. And where we normally focus in disease states is the chronic long term stress when that when that switch is not turned off. So in a chasing of tiger scenario, when we look back in the days of when we were doing that, um, running from the tiger, we go into um, you know, a flight scenario where the body would shut down the essential organs, but look at blood flow out into the extremities so we could run and get ready to go. Now that gives 
gives us an idea of where those functions would be laying and optimally. So you're running from the tiger. And then after you finish running from the tiger, everything would start to slow down and re-establish homeostasis and then bring back function to those, those bigger areas. So with what we have, the difference in our certain circumstance in our life, we don't have the tiger, but we have this, the body still responds the same to other things like someone's just cut you off into tra in traffic some the boss is stressing you out at work your friends just called and giving you bad news this puts us into a flight scenario or in, even into a freeze as well but the same chemicals are being responded so when we look at the hypothalamus and the pituitary axis and the adrenals we really have the increase of um, certain hormones through the adrenal cortex so when you get the adrenaline and the noradrenaline increasing, so that, that's that when we're trying to run, we've got those sorts of aspects going on. Now, when that, in terms of the sympathetic nervous system, which is that, when that rises, we actually don't have any rest and digest functions available to us. So you can imagine, and this is how I explain to clients, when, when you, you can imagine when you're stressed from work and you're trying to eat your lunch, your body is not going to digest. So digestive function, and this is really key for nutrient absorption, which fuels our whole body's functions and cells. So in that pure aspect, then we actually can't digest our food and, and break down our food and absorb our food correctly. And we are in this chronic state of stress a lot of times, a lot of times. I would say modern scenario, we generally never go back down into parasympathetic unless we're watching a movie, we're meditating or we're asleep. <laughs> so that has huge impacts long-term on our digestive health, on our, on, our, on our vitamins, on our minerals, on our cellular function, and then other areas of reproduction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it just goes on and on and on and the, the damage accordingly. So where we need to sort of in, infiltrate is making sure that we're having time for the body to come back into a parasympathetic nervous system state. And there's so many ways we can do that. So I'm not sure if you want me to jump into that yet. Um, well, I just firstly want to add that I loved, I love the visual, I suppose, of just understanding that when you're in that fight or flight response, your other, like, because literally the function of it is to shut down the systems that are not required in that exact moment of response, it literally means they're not available for you to use. And therefore you're not really, your body and your health is not optimal in that moment. So I think just understanding that in and of itself is really powerful because I can imagine everybody listening will have had a day in, in the recent past where you've been stressed and tried to eat lunch and you actually feel it. It's, it's like, it's the whole thing's just a stressful rushed kind of situation. Um, yeah. But yes, to, in, in terms of getting into parasympathetic, something I love talking about as well. So I'd love for you to share, I guess, maybe your, your few favorite ways that are really simple and effective that people can do in those moments where they just need to bring it back down. Someone's cut them off in traffic. You've got to step out into that meeting. Like you just need to wind back the clock for a second and just chill out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think one one comment first before I kick off on these recommendations is practice makes perfect. So mm -hmm. you, you're not going to be perfect at this to start with and you do need to do this regularly to rebuild those neural pathways because <laughs> our reactions are always automatic and we need to be able to rebuild those reactions. So be yes. patient with yourself at the same time. We need yeah. to cause more. <laughs> and I find with a lot of these tips as well, like it's not a question of, oh, I, tr I, tr I did one or two breaths and it didn't work. Like sometimes you really have to stick at it for a little while, but, but I'll, I'll hand over to you to share what those are. <laughs> so one of the simplest ones is breathing. And it really is that simple is that bringing yourself back down to a neutral position where you can start to breathe and it, it doesn't take long, 10 breaths in and out. So breathing if you can bring yourself to a point where you can actually think about you can just breathe for a little bit even while you're driving still this it's such a you know if we're talking about that scenario it's such an easy way to do it and you just need to make sure you're doing it um so breathing is number one um number two i would say is really changing your mindset around these things so and that will take time so this can be supportive of and, and knowing what's triggering you and why it's triggered you uh, so some counselling or psychotherapy or, um, you know, seeing a psychologist around these things is really important if they're really impacting your nervous system. So that's something that I find really important. 
Now, I do love um, using herbal medicine when it comes to someone who is in a really strong pattern of stress and anxiety, and I see them work so well, and this is why I talk about them a lot. And with clients that are really stuck in a pattern of stress and they can't break out of it, and they're getting huge anxiety attacks, they're getting you know, stressful events at work and they're not responding very well to life, then using these aids, I call them, to get you back into a better pattern really is supportive. So, you know, St. John's wort and passion flower and zizzy first, um, a really beautiful herbs that I use a lot. And they really make a massive, like, I, and I see it daily. You know, I just had a client just before come in and say to me, I'm really dealing well with life and it's more stressful <laughs> than it normally is, but I can really, I can cope. <laughs> and that's, that's what we want. We want our bodies to cope better. So we're not reactive all the time and therefore physiology is better. Yeah. So yeah i find those sorts of things really help but also back to foundation if we have the nutrients and the vitamins the b vitamins and all these aspects to help the nervous system function then it's going to deal better as well yeah um so coming away from that meditation so the actual you know focus therapy sessions would be meditation daily is something that can help even five minutes and that can be listening to something. I really love the Waking Up app, if no one's ever heard of that before. And that runs you through that Sam Harris. He runs you through a series of um, courses as well as daily meditations that are really simple and easy to use. So I do really love that. Um, another, tech, another few different things that I do love is meditation aids. So I do love the Sensate. Have you heard of the Sensate before? No, I haven't. So the Sensei is this little vibratory device that links into your phone and an app and it um, vibrates to the music that you're listening to. And so when you have a vibration on your skin, it creates a, a, a calmness and a connectedness. So, for example, if you were running from the tiger and your body thinks that it's in a flight mode, if someone, if, if you were um, recognizing that you were being touched then you, you you're not you're not in that sort of sense of mind you're running from the tiger you don't care if something's brushing your arm mm -hmm. but if you're sitting focused and you've got something on you and you can focus on that vibration it brings a sense of safety so your body naturally goes into the parasympathetic very quickly by having mm -hmm. something like that on your skin yeah or touch so it also sits normally when you're using it here which is vagal tone so vagal nerve feeds into our enteric nervous system, which is our gut, and it definitely is that. It is another part of our nervous system. That's why we focus on it a lot. But it feeds into that system so it creates that safety um, and that toning, so that ability for us to cope better with stress as well. Yeah, and that makes sense because I guess your vagus nerve is, is the connection between your brain and your gut. So if you're neutralizing that, that pathway, then I can imagine how powerful that would be. Yeah, and you notice when you do these sorts of things, when you're actually working with the vagus nerve a lot that you'll get grumbly and your stomach will start getting hungry because you're <laughs> digesting you're actually resting and digesting <laughs> yeah yeah love it yeah you can see it firsthand um a few other things i really love is you know gen in general music that can turn you into a different absolutely mood. So music on is beautiful it's a very powerful thing um and another technology if you may not have heard of it is called the apollo so the Apollo, and I, I did have a, a chat with its creator um, on, on the podcast, one of my podcasts, and it's the same thing. It's a band. I don't have it on, but it's a band and it, and it holds a vibration. Um, and he's done a lot of psychotherapy assisted, uh, sorry, psychedelic assisted psychotherapy work. And it works very similar to that, creating safety, creating a different nervous system function and then neural pathways. So that's also something people can look into as well. Awesome. And um, so just with the middle one you raised with the supplements, would, would that be sort of things you recommend to just get you to a point where you're a little bit more neutralized or is that an ongoing thing that you would recommend people to use? So when I look at supplements, and this is also a very good question because a lot of people think that seeing a naturopath, seeing a nutritionist would be copious amounts of supplements forever. But it's really the work you put in. So I tell, I, I tell you know, my clients, we'll get you to a point where you're feeling like you're good, all the things that I'm happy with, you're happy with, and then we go on to maintenance or you take over with your lifestyle, with your diet, with everything else that you're doing and you're happy, you can go off with that and you don't need these things anymore. Then you bring them in if you have a life event. You know, you'll go through something, you move house, you have a wedding, you have someone 
something happened in the family, then you've got always those there to know I've got some extra support if I need it. So I find that that's the best way of looking at it for these yeah. things. But once you've built up a good foundation, it's really easy to get back to that. So, yeah, I think it's worthwhile putting the effort in the, in the early days. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm really glad you said that. That was literally my my experience with my naturopath. I had some gut issues and, and worked with her to, to get that up to speed. And then I was on a, a couple maintenance things, but now I'm at a point where I can manage that based off my lifestyle choices. And I think ultimately that's kind of the position you want to be in because you've strengthened those foundational blocks. And I think we can utilize all these things to, to re re-strengthen those foundation blocks basically and then you're kind of on your own if you're prepared to put in the work so um really nice to hear that kind of giving the power back to the people almost i suppose absolutely yeah and that's what you know even one of my major mottos is empowerment and that's when it comes to students and learning and also clients and their health so you really have to have that power to be able to make those choices for your body because you're the one that knows it best Absolutely. Now, I think I'm going to have to book you in at some point next year for another chat because there are a few things on my list and a few things that have come out of our conversation today that I haven't been able to ask you. So you'll be back on the podcast, just letting you know. (laughs) But I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you so much for your time. I know we've had a few tech issues, so thanks for sticking around through those. Um, And I know everybody would have learned a lot out of our chat today. So I do really appreciate your time and your work. So thank you again. And if people do want to connect with you a little bit further or or potentially your practice, where's the best place they can do so? Yeah, sure. So um, Instagram would be at Revital Health and um, revitalhealth.com.au is my website. Um, the other website to check out is homehope.org and that's the non-for-profit organization that I'm a part of with the education that we're bringing out and I did write the um, cannabis module for that particular organization so also happy to talk about that in the future that will um, be uh, episode two yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely um, and yeah that's pretty much it you can also find me at Endeavor so teaching there on and off throughout the years beautiful. And I will add the podcast to that list below list of links for people to check out too. So thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to chatting again soon. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Erica. And that's a wrap for this week, Balancers. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found this episode useful to some degree in either steering or determining your definition of balance today. As always, the biggest compliment for us is if you share this episode with someone who you feel might need it, or if you're on Spotify, you can click follow or on Apple Podcasts, you can leave a rating or review. If you have any suggestions for up and coming podcasts, feel free to shoot us a DM or an email. Our Instagram is at the balance theory and our email is the balance theory podcast at gmail.com. Otherwise, you've always got the option of subscribing to our mailing list. We only send you email reminders when the episodes drop so you get them fresh out of the oven. No annoying spam, we promise. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and until next time, stay balanced. Oh, stop, stop.